What's up? Are we rolling? Do you not see the red flashing light? Oh, yeah. S sorry. All right. Hello, guys. Uh, we are part of Frag. Why is there a volcano background? Well, are, are Vikings from volcanoes? Yes, just change the background. Anyways, FRAG stands for Forensic Recovery and Analyst Group. In case you haven't heard of us, we're kind of a big deal. We've been asked by the Division of Criminal Investigation, DCI, to help find out if the burial site in Northern New York Museum bought was actually a Viking burial. And our good friend, Amy Whittaker, was kind enough to send us as much information as she could uh, to help our scientists here at FRAG determine if this was a Viking burial. Our team here at FRAG took all the information and came to a conclusion because we're just that good. So we had our team... No, 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 no. what are you doing? What do you mean, what am I doing? We're already talking about rocks first. Why? Rocks? Rock. I ought to slap you over the head. We gotta give the background first. No, we don't. Yes, we do. You know what? Fine. Do it your way. Thank you. So the story goes that Mr. Mora went for a walk on his property. Remember that name, Mora. We'll come back to him. Specifically, alongside an old, dried-up riverbed on the northeast corner of his property in Esserton, New York. This land was never developed, nor was any trash disposed of there. So when Mr. Mora went for his walk and he found a handle of a potential Viking sword, he was quite surprised. This is what Mr. Morrow put in this letter to Dr. Randolph Martin, Director of Antiquities at the Northern New York Museum. Dr. Martin, also remember that name, is a historian who, whose work focused on ancient North Atlantic cultures. When Dr. Martin viewed the letter and images sent by Mr. Morrow, he sent his assistant to get more information on this possible burial. Dr. Martin's assistant, uh, Eric Ras Rasaman? Ra I think Rasmussen. Ah. Anyways, we'll just call him Eric. Uh, but remember his name, too. When Eric arrived at the burial, he dug around with a shovel and uncovered a few more things to go alongside the rusted, the rusted sword handle. Eric uncovered uh, some human teeth. Uh, he also uncovered a piece of cloth, a fragment of decaying wood, and a well-preserved piece of tarnished metal in the shape of a circle with a hinge pin-like attachment. Eric then took all the discoveries back to his car and showed them to Dr. Martin. Dr. Martin looked at the artifacts and determined from the rusted sword and the brooch that this was indeed a Viking burial. After Dr. Martin claimed this burial to be a Viking burial, he went to the museum and administrators and told them, quote, this will put the museum on the map as the benefactor of the most important archeological find in the United States, end quote. Dr. Martin talked about how he was waiting all his career for something like this to happen since his two, last two burials he did not get to take credit for. Are we almost done with the backstory yet? Shut up. Dr. Martin proposed his assistant could lead the dig, and after a long meeting, Dr. Martin got permission to offer Mr. Morrow money for his property. Mr. Morrow accepted the museum's terms and conditions and received a check of half a million dollars. Oh my god, that's a lot of money. I wish I had that kind of money. Me too. But suspiciously, two days later, uh, Mr. Morrow was seen boarding a bus to Miami. As well, Estherton police found the check was cashed at a cash advance in Rena, Georgia. When the excavation dummy. When the excavation was completed, Dr. Martin was suspicious of the artifacts. Here at Frag. We uh, went through the rock samples, the bones, and the artifacts found in the burial to determine if it was a true Viking burial. When you think of a Viking, the first picture that comes to mind is a big, brolic, white European guy. So that's what we expected to see at this burial. So our scientists going into this research project were expecting to find European native rocks, Viking artifacts, and a big, brolic, white European guy bone. <laughs> Oh, sorry about that, guys. Our geologists found that there were no European native rocks after running some chemical tests. We were hoping to find some basalt because it's a very volcanic in Greenland and Iceland. Presumably, where some Vikings come from. Who put that back up? I don't know. Instead of basalt, our geologists found limestone. Limestone is a native rock to New York. That raised some, that raised some red flags at Frag. 
Hoping for some good news, our archaeologists came to a conclusion on the various artifacts found at the dig site. According to the cloth, it was made out of cotton. And the Vikings used wool, animal skins, to make their clothes because they were excellent weavers. This was not the news we wanted to start off with. As for the supposed Viking sword, the archaeologists determined that it could not have been a Viking sword. This is because the butt end of the handle was much too long and rectangular to be a Viking broadsword. The archaeologists here at Frag are also confident that the brooch is not from Vikings. Most Viking brooches have a wolf, dragon, or mythical beast on them. Viking brooches are also commonly full and have little empty space. This concludes that this brooch is not a Viking brooch. As for the teeth and the shard of wood, the archaeologists were unsure if these were Viking related. Some tests were run, but no definite answer came through. Not liking that, another few red flags were raised. We turn to the anthropologists. From measuring, comparing, and examining the bones, they found that the bones belonged to an African female in her 40s to 60s. Concerning Vikings, when pictured, our big, brolic, white European guys, uh, and because of the period of time that they lived, they didn't really live past their 30s. Finding this out raised the final red flag. We needed to debunk this Viking burial. So we have a fake Viking burial on our hands, and out of the three names we mentioned, Eric, Mr. Moron, Mr. Moron, oh, sorry, uh, Mr. Moro, and uh, Dr. Martin, uh, Mr. Moron is the most likely of the suspects. We just did it again. Oops, my bad. But you know I'm right. We're not at that part yet, though. Right. Well, Eric uh, can't be the criminal because he moved to the, to the United States to visit his uncle, and Dr. Martin is the one that told him about the burial. He also came from a long line of very intelligent individuals. Eric also just wants to make his father proud. Dr. Martin also not wanting to give an interview. Uh, we here at Bragg uh, don't think he is the criminal of this burial. Dr. Martin maybe misjudged the artifacts and reacted too quickly to the situation, but who would want to take a chance on a new discovery? After he did have some hardship in the past with his previous burials. Dr. Martin is also a very smart and respected man. He has two degrees, a PhD, has five professional positions as jobs, or has had, has over 13 publications, and eight uh, invited talks, presentations, and seminars under his belt. We think Dr. Martin just reacted a little quickly and didn't take a close look at the artifacts. His vision was fogged by the idea of a Viking burial and making a discovery that he could put his name on. As for Mr. Morrow, he is the most likely to be the criminal. Why, you may ask? Well, for one, two days later after handing over the deed to his property and receiving the check for half a million dollars, he was seen boarding a bus to Miami by his former neighbors. The second reason why we think he is guilty here at Bragg is because he cashed the check in a cash advance in Rena, Georgia. A cash advance is when you withdraw money from your credit card, which is kind of suspicious if you ask us. Pocketing the money so he can't be traced? Hmm. And third of all, Mr. Morrow has a criminal past that includes stealing or attempting to steal historic artifacts and sell them to other museums. He also has spent time in prison with two sentences that totaled eight years spent behind bars. And our fourth reason, yes, we have a fourth reason, uh, his most recent occurrence with the law came at the Northern New York Museum, which is the museum that bought the burial. So could he have wanted some revenge? So based off of Mr. Morrow fleeing, using a cash advance in a different state, his previous runs with the law for stealing historic artifacts, and the fact that he could want revenge against the museum, we think Miss Morrow committed the crime here. It is a shame, though, because ever since his mother died, he turned to a life of crime according to the dates that our good friend Amy gave us to help us with this uh, case. Our law expert at Frag has come to the conclusion that Mr. Morrow has committed fraud because he intended to deceive the museum by unjustifiably claiming that he found a Viking burial. Quite frankly, Mr. Morrow could have just dug a hole, thrown some old artifacts from his life of crime, and claimed it was a Viking burial. This is Bragg's conclusion to this case. We hope to be paid just as handsomely as Mr. Morrow was. This is Frag signing off. All right, time to hit the gym. Let's get out of here. Yeah, buddy! <laughs>